Now the next topic we're going to talk about with bonds is how do you find the value of a bond? Uh, like the value of any asset, the value of a stock, the value of a bond, the value of a business, anything now. The value of any asset is the present value of all the future cash flows. A bond now, its cash flows now, are going to be defined in the indenture of the bond. And remember that a bond has two cash flows. It has an annuity, which is the, pay, the periodic payment of interest, and it has a lump sum cash flow, which is the face value of the bond, which is what you get at the end of the life of the bond. Now, the bond that we've been talking about, we talked about when we talked about the bond indentures and all the rest now, this is a $1,000 bond with a 9% stated return, a 10-year life, and we're going to say semi-annual interest payments. As a student long ago, I always found it a good idea for me to kind of box off what it is that came out of the indenture of the bond. And so what you see in this little box here, this is what's in the indenture of the bond. This is contractual. You would always know that, okay, because you're a bondholder. You know the contract. As a student now, outside of the bond indenture, what you're asked to do, and the two things that you're going to be asked to calculate for a bond now, you're either going to be asked to calculate the price of the bond in the market, or you're going to be able to be asked to calculate the yield to maturity on the bond. As a student, you need to understand, if they give you the yield on the bond, the question's going to be, what's the price of the bond? And if they give you the price of the bond, the question's going to be, what's the yield on the bond? Now, in this example, what we're going through in this video now, this is how to find the value of a bond, how to find the price of the bond. So we know the yield, it's 12%. Now, what this is now, this is your required return as an investor for investing in this bond. This is what we would think of as our required return, our minimum acceptable return on this bond investment. We would not make this investment if we couldn't get a 12% return on our money. Now to find the price of the bond, we're going to use what's called the bond pricing formula. And the bond pricing formula you'll find out in just a second here, indeed says that the value of a bond, the price of the bond today, is the present value of all the future cash flows. So you can see that the value of the bond is equal to the periodic, the present value of the annuity, which is the periodic payment of interest. How do you find the value of an annuity? You multiply it by your PVIFA. A bond also pays a lump sum cash flow, which is the face value of the bond. And how do you find the present value of a lump sum? You multiply it by your PVIF. And again, this formula that you see at the top up here, this is called the bond pricing formula. And it says that the value of a bond is the present value of all the future cash flows. Now this bond pays 9%, that's its stated return. If we take 9% of $1,000, 0.09 times 1,000, we get $90. But this bond pays interest semi-annually. So you don't get one $90 payment, you get two $45 payments every year. So this bond pays you $45 every six months for 10 years. 45, $45 now, that's indeed the value of the annuity. How do you find the present value of an annuity? You multiply it by your PVIFA. N is always equal to the number of payments. So we're gonna get two $45 payments every year for 10 years. So we're gonna get 20 $45 payments. The I that you put in valuation now is always your required return. And in this case, we know the required return on the bond is 12%. Now this is 12% per year. This bond is a semi-annual paying bond. If you require 12% a year, how much do you require every six months? 6%. So N is 20 and I is 6%. This is the lump sum cash flow that you'll get at the end of the life of the bond, the face value of the bond. In this case, $1,000. Now, a common error that students make, and I don't want you to make this now, is they'll say, well, I'm going to get $1,000 10 years from now. 
and I require 12% a year. And so I'm going to multiply $1,000 times my PVIF with n equal to 10 and i equal to 12%. That's the wrong answer. Don't do that. Okay, that's a common answer, but it's a wrong answer. Long story short, the n and the i here is always, always equal to the n and the i here. And the n and the i in evaluation formula now, this will always define your required return. Our required return on this investment is 6% every six months. And there are 20 six month time periods. So N is 20 and I is 6%. Now to value this bond, you look up your PVIFA at 20 and 6%, you'll find 11.4699. Look up your PVIF at 20 and 6%, you'll find 0.3118. Do the math, you'll find that the interest portion of the bond is worth $516.15, and that the lump sum portion of bonds were $311.80. Add these together, you get $827.95. Now this is what's known as the intrinsic value of the bond. Intrinsic value means that that's the true worth of the bond. As an investor, we never pay more than intrinsic value for any asset. So if you, look, if you went online or you opened up the Wall Street Journal and you saw that this bond was selling for $835 in the market, would you buy it? No, because the bond's only worth what? $827.95. If you paid $835 for this bond, you'd get a return, but it'd be less than 12%. On the other hand, if you opened up the Wall Street Journal and you found that the bond was selling for $815 in the market. Would you buy the bond? Yes. Why? Because if you did, you'd get a return greater than 12%. So 12% is our required return. It's our minimum acceptable return. If we pay more than this, we won't get 12%. We'll get something less. Those kinds of situations now is, is called buying assets that are overvalued in the market. That is, the price in the market is greater than intrinsic value. Would you pay 815? Again, the answer is yes. You'd get a return greater than 12%. And you like that, and investors refer to those kinds of assets as being undervalued in the market. You'd want to buy those, okay?